Hello, I'm Artem, an IT journalist and a podcast host here at Anywhere Club. My guest today is Bohadir Ayupov, the CEO of IT Park University in Uzbekistan. Bohadir has an impressive resume, having worked on significant projects on a government scale. Currently, he is dedicated in development of the entire IT industry in Uzbekistan. Today, we will discuss uh, how government initiatives and reforms can stimulate the growth of digital sphere and capture the attention of the entire world. Before we begin, please visit the website of Anywhere Club. It is a digital platform that serves as a hub for a professional community, where you can discover job opportunities, access educational materials and find helpful tips and advice. Check the link in the description. Could you tell me your story? How well your career was started? Well, um, it's not... Uh, too exciting of a story it's not it's not too boring but uh, um, I lived uh, most of my life in uh, uh, Uzbekistan where mm -hmm. I was born uh, you know the usual story local school uh, local university uh, Tashkent uh, uh, State uh, University of uh, Economics um, uh, for, for bachelor's degree and then um, I took part in uh, the presidential fund called Umid, which means hope, mm -hmm. um, and um, became a finalist. And wow. I was uh, given an opportunity to do my master's degree in uh, the United Kingdom, the uh, University of Surrey. Um, so, uh, and then, and then upon arrival, there was there was a term, there was a condition that I would be working. Uh, for five years for the government structure, uh, which is fine, except I never imagined myself working for government. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it was a bit of a dilemma for me, uh, but uh, they told me that if I work for a, a local university, that would count as mm -hmm. a governmental structure, uh, which was uh, great news for me. So I started working for... Uh, Westminster International University in Tashkent. Okay. Uh, so I spent, uh, what, uh, five or six years working there. And uh, uh, honestly, it was a great experience for me. I, uh, uh, I got uh, a lot mm -hmm. from uh, that university. Um, my experience as, as a teacher is still doing its job for me, uh, no matter what project I'm working in. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was a time for um, a lot of experiments that I uh, that I conducted in terms of uh, uh, methods of uh, de delivering information because I used to think about uh, you know uh, uh, disciplines uh, that were liked by most students and those that were uh, that were hated. So mm -hmm. it was a time for an an analysis. What do students want? How do, how do they like to perceive, uh, to obtain information? So I met a lot of experiences. I got uh, once an award of, uh, of a uh, junior, um, uh, the best junior teacher, mm -hmm. uh, which was great for me. Uh, so uh, after working there, I, uh, I, was a, uh, uh, I was assigned as the leader of uh, a course leader of foundation studies. Uh, and then I started uh, delivering trainings for um, private companies on behalf of Westminster University. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, there was a wide range of different clients and United Nations Development Program was one of them. And then the, I got an offer from UNDP uh, and I started working for the United Nations system. So... Uh, 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 several very interesting projects, uh, uh, one uh, on ICT policy development, one on parliamentary assistance, one on social innovations, etc. So um, uh, I think I spent about eight years working for, uh, for uh, UNDP 
And then, and then I got an offer from the Asian Development Bank that was uh, a really interesting project, uh, also related to um, electronic government, which was uh, the topic of the first project that I was involved in in UNDP. Um, so uh, three years of that project uh, for ADB, uh, and then um, the uh, national coordinator was uh, uh, the minister of ICT, except those times it wasn't a ministry, it was, uh, it, it was a committee, it, uh, an agency. Uh, but uh, the current director of IT Park, Farhad Ibrahimov, uh, was working in that ministry uh, those years. Mm -hmm. And we got along really well. He was uh, a focal point from the government side, and I was the pro uh, project coordinator from uh, a Asian Development Bank. So we got really uh, well together, and we became really good friends. Mm -hmm. So uh, after, uh, well, closer to the completion of the ADB project, uh, I had a call from the current minister uh, of ICT, you know, saying we have Marzo uh, Ulubek uh, Innovation Center which is now IT Park, uh, recently launched, why don't you go and work there? Mm -hmm. And then I got a call from Farhad Ibrahimov, and he said, I'm being assigned as a director of uh, this new uh, structure, why don't, you, uh, why don't you come with us? I said, well, why not? And I mm -hmm. started working for uh, um, Marzolo Big Innovation Center, which then turned into IT Park, which is a huge structure uh, uh, currently. And um, uh, it is uh, it is uh, an agency, a, a, an executive agency uh, responsible for facilitating the development of IT in Uzbekistan. So the mm -hmm. Ministry of ICT, uh, or the official name is uh, Ministry of uh, Digital Technologies, is a regulator of this sphere. Then IT Park Uzbekistan is the main executive agency responsible for developing IT. So it's been doing really well. Uh, uh, it, it was really successful, primarily because a, because of a huge political support we received, because of a huge, very strong political will. The president himself uh, was uh, dedicated to developing IT in Uzbekistan from the uh, the very early days of his administration. Okay. We. Uh, are also very lucky to have our prime minister being an IT mm -hmm. guy. So he understands the potential of IT in boosting all the spheres of economy. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I was uh, the deputy director of uh, IT Park uh, for uh, several years. And then one of the projects launched by IT Park in partnership with EPAM Systems, a global IT corporation uh, was a university. It's called IT Park University. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then I was assigned as the uh, uh, CEO of this university. She's who I am okay. now. Oh, it sounds like a big puff. So, it so. is. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> but is the IT Park is your first project uh, exactly in IT industry? But uh, as far as I understand, you were never really an IT guy uh, in your career. Exactly, exactly. Uh, IT Park wasn't the first IT project that I was involved in. Uh, the first one was uh, called ICT Policy, ICTP. It's a project of UNDP. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was an early days of developing ICT in Uzbekistan. So a lot of great initiatives still uh, being used as the basis for a lot of initiatives in, in Uzbekistan in the sphere of IT. Um, and then, uh, and then there was this uh, e-government related project of Asian Development Bank. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, and, and then IT Park. But yes, you're right. I have never been an IT guy. Uh, I have. I, I still do not know how to code. I know the basic principle of, of programming, but uh, if you give me uh, a, 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 a task to develop, you know, a simple website, you know, mm -hmm. I'll fail. Okay. Uh, so, so am I, yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's all right. It's all right. Uh, even though I was involved in IT sphere for over 10 years now, um, uh, it was primarily on a strategic level. 
it was uh, about policy making, uh, it was about facilitating uh, the development of IT in Uzbekistan, working with companies, with mm -hmm. international companies, uh, attracting investments, etc. Okay. Uh, so, what are your thoughts about IT? What's your experience with it? From your perspective now? The only regret that I have is uh, um, I wish I uh, I wish I uh, got involved in IT earlier. Oh, um, right. this is one of the hottest and really boiling spheres in Uzbekistan right now. It's mm -hmm. really developing well, and being in uh, IT uh, park, uh, I really feel. Uh, myself as being in the epicenter of all the reforms going in Uzbekistan. And I have uh, a unique opportunity to see all these reforms from within, uh, mm -hmm. which is amazing because you feel uh, like you are being a part of history. You are observing how the history of the new Uzbekistan is being made. It's, it's enormous. IT Park. Uh, tell me more about it, please. Well, um, the idea was uh, initiated after the visit of our president to India uh, uh, about four years ago. Um, in the, five years ago, sorry. Um, so, when he visited India, it, it, it was uh, an official visit of uh, well, the president of Uzbekistan to India. He visited a place called STPI, Software Technology Park of India. And that was where our president uh, saw the uh, ability of IT sphere uh, to boost the development of, uh, uh, of all the sectors of economy. So mm -hmm. upon his arrival, uh, one, one of his major um, decrees was to uh, establish a similar structure, a similar organization or an agency responsible for facilitating IT in Uzbekistan. And his first task was do whatever it takes to make sure that Uzbekistan turns into a place with the most comfortable conditions for IT companies. We want IT companies to come to Uzbekistan. We want IT companies to emerge in Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. So this was the first task. And, and, uh, and I proudly say that we have uh, successfully uh, accomplished this mission because we made an analysis, a comparative analysis uh, uh, last year um, uh, among several countries um, chosen by uh, you know uh, traveling or relocating IT companies, and we realized that uh, uh, as per conditions offered to IT companies, Uzbekistan is on the top. So any company that comes to Uzbekistan, IT company that comes to Uzbekistan and registers as the resident of IT Park, is exempted from all taxes, no corporate taxes at all, zero. Even the personal income tax is uh, for, for people working in those uh, IT resident companies, uh, even that tax is lowered from 12% general to 7.5. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that was uh, the, the, the basic condition we started with and then we extended the activities of uh, IT Park to providing other types of uh, support to IT companies. Uh, but in general, uh, the main one of the main uh, aims or uh, uh, purposes of IT Park is to keep its finger on the pulse of the market and make sure that it translates uh, all the pain points of IT companies to the government in the form of making the necessary changes to the uh, national legislation, which is what we have been doing so far quite successfully. Yeah. So uh, zero taxes, it sounds great. 
but uh, any other reforms, any other steps with you? Uh, any of other, course, this was any the other start. benefits per companies will uh, take from participating in park? Sure, this was the start. Mm -hmm. um, this this is what we started with, and then and then we um, we decided to work on the quality of IT companies in Uzbekistan, and we uh, uh, we moved to uh, working also with startups. Mm -hmm. So IT Park still remains to be one of the main uh, platforms for developing and supporting um, uh, startups in Uzbekistan. Uh, we've engaged a lot of uh, huge venture funds. Uh, we've recently uh, managed to engage plug and play. Uh, it is official now in Uzbekistan. It's uh, starting its, uh, its exciting uh, initiatives uh, here, working with local startups. Uh, but we have uh, uh, an increasing number of startups uh, attracting uh, increasing volume of uh, uh, capital. Mm -hmm. So really interesting uh, startups here. So this is the second. And, and then we realized that if we are to develop IT in Uzbekistan, we cannot talk about this unless we have this critical mass of young IT specialists. Yes. So we so we moved into an area which is uh, which, which still remains to be one of the high uh, of one of the highest priorities, which is IT education. Mm -hmm. So many initiatives uh, were launched by IT Park. Uh, one of them is called One Million Uzbek Coders. This is a program uh, launched with the support of the government of United Arab Emirates. Um, and uh, so far, uh, over 2 million young people all over Uzbekistan um, are enrolled in this program. Over 1 million already went through one or the other course in this uh, program. So uh, 1 million Uzbek coders is, uh, to this day, uh, the largest education program in uh, Central Asia. Uh, this is one project. Uh, it's 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 a mass scale. Uh, uh, another uh, that that there are other projects. Uh, one uh, uh, some of them aimed at women developing or engaging more and more women and girls into IT sphere. Um, uh, and and uh, we have uh, specialized IT schools in all the uh, um, in all the regions of Uzbekistan. Plus, uh, we have an in infrastructural uh, network, which is second to none, to be honest. Uh, you know, for your understanding, Uzbekistan consists of 13 regions, including uh, Tashkent city. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every region is divided into an administrative division called Tuman. We call it Tuman. So there are 205 Tumans in Uzbekistan. And IT okay. Park has 205 IT centers in Uzbekistan, which means that e even in the most remote area of Uzbekistan, local young people have an IT center of IT Park nearby where they can go and get an access to all the initiatives and programs we're um, developing and running here. So, uh, so that has been working out really well, yeah. Yeah, it's a great idea to decentralize uh, the education and the community. Uh, but is it uh, based in schools or some your local universities or how does it work? This decentralization. It depends on the local uh, local administration. Mm -hmm. uh, in some in some uh, regions or Tuman's local uh, uh, administration says we have a building here, a separate building. We can allocate you, allocate this building to you. Why don't you build your IT center here? Mm -hmm. Another one says we have uh, we we have a col a local college, and the first floor is empty. We can allocate this space for your IT center. So it depends. It depends. Uh, but usually it is uh, located in in a very convenient place, and uh, uh, it's just amazing. I. Uh, uh, I, I think, I think a year ago I visited with with the uh, with the minister. Uh, uh, we visited uh, 
a very remote area of Surkhandaria region. And uh, we're driving from the, the, the administrative capital of that region, I think about two hours of drive. And you can see these villages, you know, and the, the, these uh, kids, you know, are running around with the dust uh, in small houses. And then you see this very modern structure and it's an IT center. <laughs> you go in there, you see all these modern furniture, uh, you know, uh, high-tech equipment, uh, uh, computers, and you see local kids in shorts, very dusty, you know, sitting with the two butts on one chair. All of them are really engaged in something, and you look, they're learning, uh, you know, 3D design. Uh, some of them are uh, learning Scratch. It was it was a moment. It was a moment of pride for me. Uh, I was really proud to be part of this, and this was a moment where I saw that we really are making a difference in the lives of these young people. Oh, I think you need so many teachers to make that. Oh, exactly. where have you gotten? We train them. We engage the existing ones. Uh, so. IT Park has over 500 uh, staff so far. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have uh, teachers, we have uh, administra uh, administrators in uh, every IT center. Uh, we have branches of IT Park uh, almost in every region, uh, but IT centers in every Tuman, yes. Okay. So uh, as I said, IT education is still uh, one of the highest priorities for, um, uh, for um, uh, IT Park. Sounds very interesting, but um, there is uh, always a conflict in IT education. It sounds like uh, computer science fundamentals and uh, software development needs that you will learn quickly and start working. What is your priority? Where is your prioritization in this? What do you choose to educate for these young people? Good question. Um... Which brings me to um, a couple of very interesting points uh, that explain the current trend in Uzbekistan in terms of IT education and engaging young people in IT sphere. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, there is uh, this option of uh, you know giving uh, a quick IT education to mm -hmm. uh, uh, to young people and uh, you know uh, letting them go to start working. And um, um, this one million Uzbek coders program, it does not, of course, it does not, uh, it does not uh, give you uh, middles uh, or seniors, for example. Oh, it gives no, you oh, sure, yeah, starting, sure. starting starting juniors, mm -hmm. um, and, and of course, it'll require these. Uh, graduates of this course to work on, uh, on themselves uh, in a more specific direction for longer, of course. But uh, the main aim and objective of this program is to give a taste uh, of IT mm -hmm. uh, and make it easier for young people to choose IT and uh, explore their uh, prospects uh, in this sphere, which has been working really fine. Uh, but uh, if you think about statistics, uh, with two, mi uh, two million young people currently enrolled in the uh, One Million Uzbek Coders program, uh, and over one million already having their certificates, even if we have 5% of this mass, mm -hmm. you know, become, uh, becoming good specialists in IT, this will be a great boost uh, for IT market in Uzbekistan. Yeah. Um, now, uh, as I said, uh, we have uh, we, we, we've launched IT Park University. Uh, other than this, we have a uh, couple of Korean universe, IT universities, one of them, uh, University of Inha. We have India-based uh, um, uh, IT university uh, called Amity University. And we have uh, a long uh, lasting uh, state university, Tashkent uh, University of Information Technologies uh, with several branches in uh, other regions. Uh, so we have IT universities uh, and those 
who want to you know do uh, uh those young people who want to engage themselves in this uh, uh area they mm-hmm. uh substantially they uh, prefer you know to to choose uh to go to IT universities so we have these universities mm-hmm. plus we have uh, a lot of uh, short courses one million Uzbek coders being one of them um and uh, but we but with all these um IT education projects launched we of course realize that uh, it'll take some time it'll take a year two years three years until we really start seeing a really good specialist coming mm-hmm. out of these uh, educational area and going into the market even with these short IT education courses of course of course you know we will see you know this uh, uh um quick comers uh that you know take these courses and then uh, start internships in different companies but in general of course we understand that it'll take some time for all these IT educational efforts to give their fruits mm-hmm. so um without all in place we of course cannot sit back and relax we have a lot of young people a lot of young people and uh um one area which is trending right now is called bpo business process outsourcing mm-hmm. this is something that both the government um as the ministry and it park are really engaged in so we're talking about different uh services uh provided uh, as an outsource to uzbekistan by companies abroad okay it can be uh call centers it can be different uh, um the logistics based services like fleet management this is by the, by, by the way one of the most uh, uh, popular services outsourced to uzbekistan and the main market here is the united states mm-hmm. um so uh, uh a us based company uh outsources its service to uzbekistan and we have a lot of bpo companies here sitting with large uh, teams and they are uh they are managing the fleet of uh, uh trucks of logistics companies in the united states mm-hmm. and of course it's cheaper to employ uh these uh, uh young people here than it would be in the united states so for example if uh you know uh for for, for the same job uh of a similar nature you would be paying $70 um $70 an hour in the United States mm-hmm. in Uzbekistan you would be paying $7 so of course that there, there, there's a big delta here there's a big saving uh for uh look. plus we uh, we uh, do all it takes to ensure the quality of these people we have mm-hmm. launched uh uh over 10 bpo company bpo schools in different regions of uzbekistan um and these are the schools that prepare young people for these kind of jobs so this is something uh that young people can train themselves uh in a very short period of time and start earning money right away and there are several very Im- Im- important problems um that this solves um for many years uzbekistan has been known uh as a source of what we call gastarbeiters so uh young people from uh, especially from remote areas they would travel to uh, to russia to kazakhstan to ukraine to to different countries and what uh, uh, to be to be employed in a, a low skilled labor as a low skilled labor uh, mm-hmm. and they would be sending their money home of course but of course there was a lot of uh, uh, risks 
uh, and bad sides involved in this. And uh, and this BPO development uh, in in many ways uh, in many ways solved this problem. It uh, uh, it uh, allows these young people to engage in BPO in a very short period of time and start earning pretty much the same money that they would be earning in other countries as a, as, as a low-skilled laborer. Except they would be at home with their families and earning here and export. Yeah, and this, this sounds great, but uh, when I think of these young people, uh, how they would think. I don't want to work seven dollars an hour. I want to become a great specialist and move somewhere else where I will, they will pay me seventeen dollars an hour. Of don't course. you afraid that everybody will uh, become a great professional and move abroad? Well, uh, if you are working uh, for seven dollars an hour, it doesn't mean that you will stop here. Mm -hmm. uh, for a young person. Uh, who who has just started to work, you know, earning any money is great. Yes. Plus, plus, this gives these young people a taste of IT mm -hmm. and and a realization that this is not a maximum that I can do. This is not the maximum that I can earn. So this is just a quick quick way to start earning money which is very important, especially in remote areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and of course, once they start working and once they start gaining experience and getting promoted, of course, that would be, uh, they are earning more and more money. They are progressing to uh, other areas, both horizontally and vertically. And uh, I know a lot of cases where these young people uh, who started with uh, BPO services, providing BPO services in BPO companies, then uh, uh, transitioned to uh, other areas of IT. I know a guy who started, uh, you know, who got really interested then in uh, graphic design and is earning uh, really decent money now. Uh, I know a guy from Surkhan Darya who is, uh, who also start, started as a simple, you know, uh, uh, BPO um, uh, BPO uh, company employee, and uh, he is now uh, a re uh, really good at uh, Python mm -hmm. uh, and uh, working uh, as, as as a project manager in one of the biggest IT companies in Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. So uh, so it's a, it, not only does BPO give them an opportunity to quickly educate themselves and start earning money. Uh, but also opens up uh, many doors of opportunities, shows them the perspectives that mm -hmm. they have. Um, plus, they won't have to leave their families. Plus, they won't have to expose themselves to, uh, to risks of working in different dangerous uh, uh, types of works, uh, like construction, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, so yeah, so that's why uh, instead of just waiting for uh, these IT education programs to produce uh, over time of three or five years some really good specialists, we are working on um, BPO, on developing BPO. Mm -hmm. Especially considering that uh, uh, there are really good conditions for BPO companies. So a lot of BPO companies are coming, are moving to Uzbekistan because they see that it is cheaper. Uh, it, it's a great cost-saving practice to, to work from Uzbekistan than from uh, another country. Mm -hmm. For the same reasons that I mentioned earlier, no corporate tax, even, uh, even for BPO companies. This is something that we've uh, introduced uh, uh, a couple of years ago, the condition for be becoming a, a resident was uh, uh, to do an IT job. Uh, you, ha you, ha you have to be an IT company. But we decided to give residentship also to BPO companies. 
So even if you, you know, uh, a BPO company providing call center services, mm -hmm. uh, you can also become a resident of IE. Even if it's uh, like data entry, even if it's graphic design, for example, you can still become, uh, your company can still become a resident of IT Park and be, uh, get exemption from all taxes and mm -hmm. enjoy all other benefits uh, provided by IT Park. When we started working on developing these conditions for IT companies, we realized that the time will come when IT companies will come to Uzbekistan, when a lot of IT companies will emerge from uh, within. And uh, I think in those times, those times, I think we had uh, 50 something uh, a bit over uh, than 50 IT companies registered as residents of IT Park. Mm -hmm. And we thought there will be a boom of IT companies in several years from now. They will need offices. And then we decided to uh, engage ourselves in a new area called infrastructure project. So uh, it was the time when the president, our president visited us for the first time and we presented to him our vision, our plans, and we presented to him a model of a local area where we showed uh, there will be this building, an office building, et cetera, et cetera. It was just, you know, uh, I, I think um, one or two hectares of space. And he looked at it and said, uh, this is no good what you are telling me does not coincide with what I see. This is an inadequate model. Mm -hmm. Take bigger. And he gave us, I think, 6.5 hectares of space. And there were buildings of, uh, uh, of uh, tax committee, uh, interior uh, affairs, um, ministry, uh, build, uh, bu related building, etc. He said, take these buildings. Never <laughs> in the history, structures of these government uh, uh, agencies were taken away. Mm -hmm. This was the first time. It shows you the dedication of uh, the, 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 the uh, country administration, the president, to developing IT. Uh, so uh, we now have... Uh, uh, the first phase of construction already completed. Uh, I will gladly send you uh, uh, photos and uh, videos of a small IT okay. city that we have built. Uh, yeah, well, it's all occupied. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, uh, you know uh, skyscrapers. It's it's just amazing. It's 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 amazing. So mm -hmm. this is another area uh, where IT Park is still working. Yeah, hope IT boom boom of IT companies will come. We we had over fifty companies at the uh, uh, at that time. Today we have over one thousand IT companies registered as residents wow. of IT Park. So so yeah, that uh -huh. boom is already happening. Uh, there is an increasing yeah. number of uh, uh, foreign IT companies coming to Uzbekistan. <clears throat> Many of them are referring to Uzbekistan's IT market as uh, Klondike. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, this is the great time to come in uh, and take your uh, stance in, um, take your position in the market of Uzbekistan because uh, this is just the beginning. Tomorrow it'll be overcrowded and you will have to use your elbows, uh, <laughs> you know, to, to, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, yeah. succeed in this market. So, because, as I said, conditions are really, really great. And this market is especially interesting <clears throat> for exporting companies because, because of the uh, uh, comparatively low uh, cost of labor, because of uh, a large amount of, uh, of young people, we have 36 million people of population and over 60% of our population is constituted by young people. Mm -hmm. So this uh, statistics, demographics engages, uh, attracts a lot of uh, IT companies, large IT companies 
um, constantly looking for human capital. So human capital is one of the most valuable assets we have, and we build our strategy around this fact. For many companies willing to relocate to Uzbekistan, uh, we have provided uh, uh, we have provided a program that we call Tash Rush, Tashkent Rush. You know, uh, okay. Com coming from Golden Rush, uh, or, or, you know, uh, yeah, I got it. Back in those days, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So be because uh, last year, uh, because of some, you know, uh, uh, some uh, known uh, to all of us uh, uh, political reasons, uh, very unfortunate ones, uh, a lot of companies started to relocate from Russia, from Belarus to uh, Uzbekistan, to Armenia, to Azerbaijan, to Georgia to Turkey, United Arab Emirates. So these are the countries that we made a comparative analysis among, mm -hmm. the comparative analysis that I mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, Uzbekistan uh, those days was not really uh, well known as an IT market. Uh, it still is off the radars of many companies, unfortunately. Uh, but those companies that uh, dared, that were open to new opportunities uh, and came to Uzbekistan to see for themselves, uh, they were in a, uh, in a state of shock because unfortunately, even among the CIS countries, I'm not, I'm not even talking about uh, a lot of Western countries uh, where, where a lot of people do not even know about Uzbekistan's existence. Even in, in those countries, um, in, in CIS countries, there's a lot of people who think about Uzbekistan as a cotton field or a desert with uh, uh, a couple of uh, camels walking around. So uh, that, 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 these are the stereotypes that a, a lot of people unfortunately have. Um, uh, Again, when, when I'm traveling uh, to like United States, for example, uh, meet mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, even in Europe, meet a lot of people that say, where are you from? I say, Uzbekistan. Oh, Pakistan. I say, no, 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 Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan, where is that? I say, do you know Kaz Kazakhstan? No. Tajikistan, Turkmenistan? No. Afghanistan? Oh, yes, 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 Afghanistan. A lot of people know Afghanistan, unfortunately. Uh, and I say, well, it's right. Yes. Yeah. And I say, well, it's not right in a good way. It. Yeah, not in a good way. So when I say that Uzbekistan is a country which is located right above it, the usual reaction is, oh, you know, with, with this uh, uh, solidarity, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, I, you know, I feel for you. Uh, yeah, and yeah. unfortunately, because of this, a lot of people think that. Uh, security is an issue here, that it's not safe to travel to Uzbekistan. Uh, however, uh, nonetheless, Uzbekistan is one of the safest countries in the world. And you, you, you can Google it. Uh, the, there was a lot of publications that, uh, you know, um, uh, that, that have a rating of security. And Uzbekistan is always in the top list. Uh, in those uh, uh, in those ratings, and there, was, there there are specific reasons for this. It's precisely because we border with Afghanistan, because uh, uh -huh. back in the back in the days, specific measures were taken to ensure that we have a very strong army, and all the security uh, measures were taken. Um, the, the, there were threats. Uh, uh, related to re uh, religious uh, radical movements, etc. That all has been eliminated and uh, eradicated. Um, uh, uh, that that is why uh, you know Uzbekistan is one of the safest countries in the world. And um, so, if you, for example, walk, you know, come out of uh, a local club at uh, two a.m. and start walking home. Uh, you will never have to fear that uh, somebody will come and mug you. So it's really, really safe. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is a, a, a lot of people who come to Uzbekistan physically, 
they uh, and we're quite used to to this reaction. They you know stay in a state of uh, shock. <laughs> I never thought to you know that that Uzbekistan is a place like this. They see modern buildings. They see uh, nightlife. They see, you know, uh, these business uh, uh, business centers, uh, big companies, uh, uh, famous brands in Uzbekistan. They say, why do you never tell about yourselves to the world? Uh, <laughs> and and I, I admit, on behalf of uh, Uzbekistan, I admit this is our shortcoming. This is what, where we come weak. We do not PR ourselves and promote ourselves well enough uh, you know, for companies and people to know uh, about Uzbekistan. This is an area where we have to do uh, uh, still uh, quite some work. Could you tell me about the uh, developers community in Uzbekistan? How you help the developers to, to build the communities, to make events or something else? Yeah. Well, uh, this was uh, also um, one of the objectives of IT Park to bring together the IT community, which back in the days was uh, quite small and again, segregated. Uh, every, uh, every IT company was living uh, uh, by uh, and out uh, on its own. Um, the more companies started to come to Uzbekistan, the more companies started to open in Uzbekistan, uh, the larger this community started to become, and uh, IT Park started to engage in in different e initiatives, events to bring these community uh, together. We started uh, having um, business breakfasts, you know, uh, uh, to to get together CEOs of uh, largest IT companies to discuss different issues they are facing, some common ones, uh, because. Uh, they knew that uh, we can help them uh, by changing uh, the respective legislation. So uh, that was one initiative. We we, we have a uh, so uh, we have an IT community uh, headed by uh, uh, headed by Shavkat. Uh, what was his last name? Uh, the guy who spent most of his uh, life in the United States, originally from Uzbekistan, Shavkat Karimov, I think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, we organize uh, various events on different topics. And uh, this IT com community is becoming bigger and bigger, and they, they are finding the benefits. The more uh, these events, um, we have uh, the the more benefits the IT community sees in uh, getting together and working as one community. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, uh, girls uh, IT community, uh, also a project called GAP, mm -hmm. uh, which in Uzbek means a word. Um, so uh, uh, IT community, women IT community, community uh regularly meet in the form of uh, a separate event uh, so uh so that's also another very interesting trend so yes uh, this uh, uh it community in uzbekistan is uh, shaping really well in it, and, and it's coming together and this is making uh it parks life easier too because uh, because we are able to communicate with the IT community in a more organized and structured way and, uh, you know, um, and target uh, the, the, the uh, pain points of the highest priority. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, uh, in short, we do have uh, a very interesting IT community, uh, which is coming together more and more often and closer. And IT Park is really uh, uh, facilitating um, this IT community formation. 
I have uh, really a lot of friends in developers community all around the world. And uh, in one of my best friends is uh, from Uzbek Uzbekistan. Uh, and as I see, the common dream in community is to work somewhere like Facebook, Microsoft, uh, Netflix, mm, Monk, and everything. Yeah, we want to become uh, a big professional and to move to Europe or uh, United States or somewhere else. Is this dream okay for you? Is it okay for uh, to educate people here and let them go? Or you or you should fight for them so they could stay here? Right. We're talking about brain drain. Uh... Uh, which is a really interesting question that we are uh, very often engaged in. The way I see it is, um, <clears throat> and I know the minister shares this uh, uh, perspective with me, um, you can never stop brain drain. Uh, there will always be uh, young people willing to go to countries like uh, the, the U.S., uh, Europe, um, mm -hmm. European countries. And uh, the way I see it, you look at the bucket, which is mm -hmm. being filled uh, with the tap water, right? With a hose. So, um, and we have a leakage in the, on, on the bottom of uh, the, the bucket. Instead of, instead of uh, uh, you know, closing this uh, leakage, uh, Instead mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, fixing this hole, what we need to do, we need to open up the holes a little more. So, uh, and uh, ensure mm -hmm. an increase of supply to this bucket. As long as the level of water in this bucket remains the same, it doesn't matter how much water we lose. So, uh, instead of you know, uh, stopping these uh, young people from going to other countries, uh, we just need to uh, work on increasing the amount of uh, uh, the amount of new uh, IT specialists coming to IT market of Uzbekistan. That's one side. Another side. Uh, another reason why we should not close uh, or or fix this hole. Uh, is there is uh, there is a long term benefit uh, of this brain drain brain drain because these young people mm -hmm. go to uh, the U S start working for Meta start for working for companies uh, like Amazon Netflix etc cetera, etc cetera. and the more uh, of our people we have there in that community the more uh, the 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 more um, diaspora we have, and we already have mm -hmm. quite quite a large diaspora of U Uzbek people in the United States, and they, over time, will be coming, will be bringing their expertise and uh, their abilities and skills back to Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. and this is what we are seeing now. We are seeing now that a lot of people are coming back to Uzbekistan with all the reforms in our country, with all these new conditions. They are now, I know a lot of uh, um, uh, our compatriots uh, in the United States opening branches of their companies, long established IT companies in the United States. They're opening their branches in Uzbekistan mm -hmm. uh, and working from there, from, from, from here. Yeah. Uh, employing uh, local people, uh, you know, uh, uh, passing on uh, a new knowledge and know-how to uh, the local market. So this benefit is quite more important, more important uh, than um, than any other. So uh, uh, we, the answer is, uh, it's great for our young people to have a dream to be working for large Fang companies. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we should work on uh, ensuring uh, a continuous supply of good IT specialists, both from within 
and from outside and also encourage young people to go to those countries and establish their communities there, but facilitate and maintain our connection with those young people. Mm -hmm. You know, in instead of saying, this guy has left to the US, we lost him. No, we don't know him. No, we stay in communication with them. We engage these uh, specialists from the road to our local events, uh, even if it's online, as long as they know that Uzbekistan still cares for them, mm -hmm. they will have their dedication, uh, you know, coming back to us uh, in a larger volume uh, and, and importance, benefiting e eventually uh, the development of IT in Uzbekistan. It's a great point, and I agree with you. Yeah. Bhadir, thank you. Uh, I really love your passion about developing IT in Uzbekistan, and I sincerely hope you will succeed. And you, Thank Uzbekistan you so will get a big, big, great IT industry. I really hope. Thank you it. very much, Artom. Thank you. Well, whenever you have a chance to travel to Uzbekistan, please let us know. We will be, uh, Uzbekistan is also known for its hospi hospitality. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, will, we will make sure that we demonstrate it to you. Um, with the with the soonest opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I will definitely visit Uzbekistan.